but I often say in parades, and in the reason that we, as members of the National Defense Force, we are above party politics. We pay our loyalty to the Constitution of the Republic. That's all that I can say. Because the rest actually is not worth commenting on and we don't involve ourselves in politics. So this is more of an interaction with the media and I'm not anything else. And then uh, as you are aware, also aware that uh, the Defense Force uh, is involved in taking a number of areas. Uh, recently we've been involved in the Northwest. Uh, we are involved in our borders, we are also involved uh, in external operations in the, the Eastern DRC. So uh, I'm with, I've got with me here uh, members of the Military Command Council who in fact as we engage in fact will keep you abreast in fact about the developments. But maybe I must start with the Northwest that uh, as we are aware that we've been helping uh, the health Department in the Northwest, and I, I'm proud to say, a mission accomplished will be pulling out of the Northwest with immediate effect. But however, we continue to assist the people there in terms of water and sanitation, as we are aware that they have been also helping uh, the Nzobota municipality with water and sanitation. But the rest really, uh, it is more of an interaction between the media and the military command council because we believe that uh, it is important that from time to time we should meet one another and uh, if there are issues of interest that we'd like to know, we can then give you answers from your mouth, not through speculations. That's our story. This chief of the South African Defense Force has already stated that interaction it means uh, today we interact to try uh, to answer certain questions if those questions come about the Defense Force. There's the time I'm just going to open up uh, for the, to the floor for now uh, to take questions. The, we are going to, do, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to take a uh, uh, three question per round. When you want to say something, you raise your hands and then you are going to mention your name and the middle half where you come from and then you state your question. It's open to the floor now. Uh, I have not heard the king there. Good morning, General Shockey. Kim from Defence Web. Returning specifically to the Northwest deployment, what happens now in terms of payment for the services provided by military health service? Does that get paid directly to SAMS or does it go to Treasury? Thank you. Thank you, Kim. You're my brother, then. Uh, good morning, Chief. Uh, my name is Aseri I'm from China Capital News. And I, I, I'm not going to go to the politics side of, of the of things, but I just want, I just saw a statement uh, by a political party requesting it was a request uh, the way I looked at it, requesting the the South African National Defence Force to intervene in the crimes, uh, to to intervene in Cape Town <coughs> uh, in order to combat the crimes happening that side. Also. Uh, when it comes to the, uh, I, I think they, they called it manpower in Johannesburg. Yesterday there was a video that started circulating whereby a metropolis uh, has been uh, manhandled. They were fighting, in fact. They were just fighting. And most people kept on saying, no, in a situation like this, especially in places like, uh, 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 I think it was Selby, that side of Selby in Johannesburg, they were, they were also requesting that if the army can intervene in combating the crimes there, or at least maybe have visibility of 
the South African National Defense Force. I just want to check if is it possible that that can happen without uh, without maybe wasting resources in a way, but also just uh, uh, having something uh, along those lines so that uh, I don't know if to scare or to just take action uh, solving those uh, problems. Specifically, the one at the Cape Town is the most uh, important one, I think. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, it's Nayezo uh, from Power FM News. Um, with regards to the Northwest, uh, you say mission accomplished. Um, are you then saying that the health department, that side, as far as uh, stabilization of, of, of resources, you are satisfied to a point where uh, we would not go back and see what we had seen um, a couple of months back? Um, and with regards to, to, to Cape Town as well, just to touch on that, uh, I know that uh, it comes from the top if, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 you, the military has to be deployed in an area um, and it's from an office higher than the one here. But in what kind of situations do you then decide this is where the military needs to take place? Because one would imagine that when you look at the crime that's happening that side, um, the military is needed, if I'm talking from a layman's point of view. But from a defense point of view, what needs to be done for the military to be uh, deployed there? Thank you very much. This is the first round. And over to the chief, SNDF. Uh, maybe when I deal with the Northwest, that the weather check are we going to be paid or not? Uh, what we have indicated to our principals is that it should be against payment because uh, we're facing serious budgetary constraints. But uh, be that as it may, you know that actually uh, here at home we've got the same, uh, what we call the B7 account. People pay the money to the B7 account and they bring it to the department and I hope that we'll get it this time because we need each and every cent. Uh, as well as the health department is up to speed, we have done what we requested to do. Uh, people now, we, we help the people there, and then the situation is almost back to normal. If whether they will continue, uh, they will be able to sustain what we have done, really it is not in our domain. It is, they've got their own executive that will determine whether they've succeeded or not. Coming to the issue of crime, I think uh, our mandate is clear as a South African National Defense Force is to protect the territorial integrity of the country. However, uh, as part of our collateral utility, we do assist other state departments. And uh, we do not deploy ourselves. We, get, we are ordered. And then when we are ordered to do something, we will never refuse. But be that as it may, crime is not in our domain. And we will try to avoid as much as possible to, be, to get involved in combating crimes. Because uh, if I may repeat what I said in November, that you know, when we come in, we scope and donor. And you know, uh, you don't want in fact, ourselves to be in that situation where now we are seen to be fighting against our own people. I think I've done all what we've listened. Yes, General. Yeah, uh, except maybe in the Northwest, what I must also add is that uh, we will still be there to help the municipality of the Jobot with water and sanitation. Thank you. Thank you, General. Let me go for the second round. Yes. Uh, Slinda Lomasigana from ENCA. 
Uh, I just have two questions with regards to uh, the court um, judgment with regards to the uh, officers that were moved from Maryvale. I understand you were ordered to take them back. Officers. Um, yes, there was an order that uh, you had evicted some illegal people, I mean rather, that were staying at that base. Um, and you were ordered to, that they must go back. Have you complied with that order? If not, why not? And uh, I know you've spoken about that deployment to the Western Cape. Um, do you think that uh, it's the best way to use the resources of the SANDF if you were ordered to go into the Western Cape? Thank okay. you. Thank you. Other questions? Okay. Uh, I said from Tana Capital News again. Uh, General, I, I, I think, in fact, I know that uh, you, your, uh, your domain is to protect the borders, right? So I once spent a number of days uh, at the Kruger National Park uh, between the border of South Africa and uh, Mozambique. I spent three days there. I never saw anyone from uh, the army or military. And uh, if I can show you the pictures of that fence there, I think it needs intervention because uh, it needs someone maybe to, to oversee quite often because uh, people just jump in and out of, of, that, uh, uh, of that borderline. Not just, besides like, uh, uh, jumping in and out, I think uh, you also helping protecting the Kruger National Park, uh, conserving the, the rhino uh, species. Uh, the people coming from Mozambique, it looked like they were jumping from that side because uh, it's, it quite, it's quite easier and you can even see the footpath uh, from Mozambique to South Africa. And they're jumping the fence quite freely. What can you say about that one? Okay, Chief. Sir. Okay, uh, maybe let me start about the issue of Marivale. Notwithstanding, in fact, the court order that the people should uh, return uh, to be returned to the base, in fact, where in fact they've been illegally squatting. I must put this in, in context that you know uh, sometimes as South Africans and as people. It is, uh, it is important that we should respect institutions of state, and particularly those who deal with law and order. And then we should also learn to respect other people's properties, whether irrespective whether it is a government property or an individual property. Uh, in Marivale, uh, there are people there, some of whom are illegals, some actually, in fact, criminal element, who were staying there. And then, of course, uh, there was the process, in fact, the court orders, where, in fact, uh, people went to court and the court ruled in favor of those people that they should come in fact to the base, which in fact, uh, unfortunately, uh, is a court order in fact that really, we don't really agree with it 100%, but will respect in fact the, the synthesis of the court. And then uh, our people, legal people, have been engaging with the legal people that know they should come, they gave them a bungalow, and I'm told that they are, they are refusing to stay in a bungalow. And then I don't know now beyond that, because we are not a department of housing, we are not a municipality, what they expect the Defence Force to do if they don't want to stay in a bungalow. But however, we leave that to the people in fact who understand the law better to engage. So, uh, I'm not a lawyer by profession. 
uh, the use of state resources were in order to do this thing, unfortunately, well, you are an instrument of state. We can't get resources anywhere except from the state. Uh, the Kruger Park fencing and what uh, the thing, what we said uh, that uh, check, uh, the border, I think then, uh, you know, what we have said is a mouthful. It shows, in fact, how difficult, under what difficult conditions our people are operating. Because if we had resources, definitely, in fact, we'll request that the whole area be fenced so that then they should make the work of our soldiers easier. So that's all what I can say, that uh, it's just an indication of under which conditions our people are operating. It's very difficult. I'll leave it as such. Thank you, Jaran. I'm open up for another round. Uh, Kim, this side. Sorry, General, just a follow-up question on Marival. Are there any plans to reactivate the base as such, or is this just considered normal housekeeping to keep the base in good order? And then secondly, would you be prepared to say anything about the boards of inquiry into SASIC as well as the um, reserve force call-ups? Thank you. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, let me start and talk about Merivale. Uh, you know, uh, is our facility, and we would like to put it in good shape. And then, uh, as you are aware, that actually now uh, we are busy now uh, implementing or trying to start with the milestones in fact of uh, the thing, uh, the defence review. So we need that facility for the future. And then uh, with the uh, issue of SASIC and the reserve force collapse, uh, I've got a team of people there. I got Kenradi Kude Iso, Manikis Vasi. Yeah, thank you. can mark it here, said Amadeb. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for trusting me to answer this one. Um, just to, to allude on the Board of Inquiry on Sussex, it's completed, and there's a process that is still to be followed. The Chief of the National Defence Force, General Shoke, has been uh, issued a copy thereof, and all that I want to say is that many of the recommendations of this Board has been implemented already. Uh, for instance, horses that had to be shifted to Royval, north of uh, Pretoria, they have been shifted indeed. However, there are still a few aspects that is going to take a little bit longer due to other state departments involved. To procure a farm where these horses could be kept under proper circumstances, that is uh, still to, to, be, uh, to, to be put in place. But otherwise, a lot of uh, aspects have been put in place, and I can assure you that the biological assets of the South African National Defence Force is well cared for, e.g. being dogs and horses. Thank you. And then the other one, I think I've got General Anderson. Uh, General Anderson is responsible for the reserves uh, in the Defence Force. Uh, thank you, General. The question about the boards of inquiry on the reserves, this is an army matter, so maybe... General Lahuda might want to correct or amplify. Let's get to the background of the problem. Sadly, the majority of our reserves are not employed in their civilian life. And the mandates available for call-ups are being cut in the budgets. So this causes a, an environment where there can indeed be corruption. And sadly, people have exploited the situation where they've asked for bribes from reserve force members to get call-ups which they desperately need. Simply put, the Board of Inquiry by General Comfort is complete. He's made 39 recommendations that are on the desk of the Chief of the Army, General Yam. They are being implemented as we speak. Four out of the 60 units have been implicated and those are now going through a legal review because, of course, if you start mentioning names and persons, uh, you've got to be very careful of your legal ground. And perhaps the other very important issue is General Yam has introduced a process now where the call-ups can only be done by a committee, not by an individual. So I can't say we've eradicated it, but I can say that we're taking this uh, alleged corruption very, very seriously. 
The chief has also appointed a multidisciplinary team led by the head of the military police to continue the investigation and to make sure that we root it out. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, let me take another round of questions. If Maybe are that will around. be the last round, I'm assuming. No, sir, it's not going. It's interaction. I'll give them time. Uh, Erika. Morning, General Erika Gibson here from Report. Um, General, can we talk about the Cuban mission and how it came about, how it um, uh, sort of proceeded, and um, what happens next as to uh, specifically the the weapons, the, the, the permits issued for the weapons, the simulators, and especially why. Why there was um, a need to have the um, armaments refurbished in Cuba, um, what pre uh, preceded it, whether there was a proper investigation as, uh, or, or uh, evaluation of, of local capabilities as opposed to Cuban um, capabilities and so on. Thank you, Erika. Is there any other question? Over you to your chief. Is the lemon dry? It's not dry. Uh, there's no honey in there. Okay. No. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, The Cuban project, popularly known as Project Tucson, I think is something that is not new. Uh, it's a project that started in 2015. Uh, I think, in fact, we did have several media briefings about the project. And uh, I told also, it is also my wish that actually I should take the media to go and see what in fact practically that people, those people are doing in terms of uh, training and transferring skills to our own people. Uh, I think we are all aware that in fact in the past the Defence Force, particularly in the vehicle in the same industry, was like a milk cow. It was just like a cow that was just being milked, in fact, and where we were spending millions and millions of rent in trying to repair our vehicles, but yet, in fact, they were not combat ready. And then we felt that, you know, the issue of outsourcing is no longer the way, the route to go. We should build our own inherent capability to be able to do our own things. And maybe I will even pause there, in fact, and also communicate the fact that, you know, uh, as a military command, uh, in May, we took a deliberate decision that most of the things we are going to do them internally to build our own inherent capabilities because uh, we are facing serious budgetary constraints. So, uh, as you are listening, I was uh, indicating that now uh, you are all aware that the Cubans are training our own people. And not only now in the vehicle, this thing, we are also now training our people in developing and doing simulators for our own. And uh, we've got some experts in that area who are busy training our people and we've got also people who are in the universities in Cuba and other military institutions training in different masterings so that we can have some of the expertise that we require and stop the outsourcing process. So uh, with the issue of the licenses and uh, this thing that what, uh, happened there, uh, I have not read the story, but I've heard about this thing, uh, that what was uh, this thing, it is said in fact, the allegations that uh, the Defence Force was smuggling the same weapons and what have you. But subsequent to that, I think uh, we issued a statement as a Defence Force. And then also uh, Customs and uh, the same SARS, yes, 
They also issued a statement that, in fact, all that was said, in fact, it was not, in fact, the truth. For whatever reason, uh, this thing, Erika, somebody, in fact, in our own the same uh, department, just decided to leak information, and which was not 100%.